Students are deeper in debt today than ever before, and two out of three college students graduate with significant debt burdens. While most colleges are struggling to keep costs under control, the cost of a college education is rising faster than the cost of medical care and as much as three times as fast as consumer prices in general. Students borrow because they see little choice. They see college education as a key to success. However, in the case of student loans, there is no walking away. Unlike most forms of debt, student loans carry almost no consumer protection and little ability to refinance. By law, they can't be wiped out in bankruptcy. These draconian laws would make a mobster envious. These huge debt burdens threaten the vitality of our nation as they leave our future productive workers mired in debt and are certainly not good public policy. So, is there any way the nation could help our future workers to become well-educated and become productive members in our society? This video will present one possible solution. Consider the following facts. According to a congressional analysis which was published in the Washington Post, the recently enacted plan to extend the tax cuts for the rich could add more than $36 billion to the federal deficit next year and transfer the bulk of that cash into the pockets of the nation's millionaires. Let's just take a look at some of the compensation that these people are receiving. These people are making more than people who win the lottery jackpot and they make millions every year, year after year. These people on the average make more in one day than the average worker makes in a year. And some of these same bankers received government bailout money while now they are making millions every year in compensation and bonuses. They have trillions to bail out the bankers in Wall Street, but they are talking about cutting hundreds of billions, which would include aid to education, and placing additional burdens on students. Now, these people that we saw earlier are not even close to being the richest in the nation. In fact, there are people that are making significantly more than they are. In fact, the amount of money that these people make is staggering. John Polson, the manager of Polson and Company, made an estimated $2.3 billion in personal earnings in 2009. James Simmons, the manager of Renaissance Technologies, made an estimated $2.5 billion in personal earnings in 2009. George Soros, manager of Soros Fund Management, made an estimated $3.3 billion in personal earnings in 2009. And the top earner was David Tepper, manager of Appaloosa Management. He made $4 billion in a single year in 2009. Now, consider this. David Tepper makes $456,000 per hour for every hour of every day in the year. I wonder if he worries about the minimum hourly wage. If David Tepper goes to a two-hour movie, he will pay about $15, but he will make $912,000 in that time. If David Tepper plays a round of golf at the country club, he will pay around $500, but will make over $2 million that afternoon. David Tepper can purchase a $100 million yacht with under two weeks' worth of earnings. David Tepper can purchase an oceanfront mansion worth $100 million for under two weeks' worth of earnings. These people cannot spend money as fast as they make it. So, why are we pointing all this out? Because once all of the tax cuts are finally phased in, a staggering 52.5% of the benefits will go to the richest 5% of the taxpayers. So, do these people really need tax cuts when our students and their families are groaning under the weight of student loans, home foreclosures, unemployment, and other results of the economic crisis? Consider this. If the recent tax cuts for the rich were repealed and the rich paid their fair share, we would have enough revenue 
to give every single one of the 11 and a half million college students in the U.S. a Pell Grant for $3,130. And that would be repeated for every year they attended college. Certainly, these wealthy elites can afford to pay their fair share. Now, wouldn't helping our future productive workers be a better way to invest in our nation's future than giving the elites more money? In our next video, we will explore how we can make this happen. It is already happening in Great Britain.